Hello there, it's Bronze and Modern Gods. I'm John. And I'm Richard. Hey everybody, welcome. We've got some great stuff for you this week. We're back. Uh, we had a show last week. If you missed it, go on YouTube. If you're a podcast listener, it was a live stream from California Comic Con. And so I don't know, it didn't make much sense to deliver it as an audio only podcast. So make sure you head over to our YouTube channel and check that out. Or as a Lester uh, on NBC News says on their YouTube channel after every news story for NBC News, Lester Holt says, check out our YouTube channel. <laughs> I love how he says YouTube. It's some new technological marvel that he just discovered. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm already off uh, track here. Uh, Richard, what should they do if they uh, want some more content from us during the week? They can uh, go to, uh, what can they do if they want more content from us through the week? Why they can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, that was your, your prompting for. Yeah, Facebook yeah. and Instagram. Uh, you here? <laughs> <laughs> Richard is uh, jet lagged a week later yeah. from back from California Comic Con. Uh, before we get started, let's have a quick word from our favorite sponsor. We do have a favorite, I have to admit. Wakum. Hi, everybody. Richard from Browns and Modern Gods want to talk to you about a new app that's available in the Google Store and the App Store. It's called Wakum. Uh, Wakum lets me scan UPC codes off of comics and automatically add them to my collection. Boom. Simple as that. Really intuitive way of being able to grow your collection. You can also mark books as being read right, and also see books you haven't read yet so you know where you are in your reading habits. Wakum automatically will notify you as new books come out for what you have in your collection so you can keep up to date with the current issues of your favorite stories. And I love this part. I can follow my friends and even see what John is collecting and reading. You're in total control. You can have it as simple as just scanning the books and leaving it at that. Or if you want to add all kinds of metadata like the grade of the book or anything else you want to track, it can handle keeping track of all the information you want. So again, go to your favorite application store, the App Store, or the Google Play Store, and download Wakum today. Thanks. If you have not downloaded Wakum yet, what you waiting for? Go check it out. It's free. You got nothing to lose. Uh, Richard, California Comic Con. Let's talk about it a little bit. Um, we're a week out from it now. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think? I, it was it was fun. It was fun uh, in a different way than the last time I went, which was back in twenty. 2020 or 2019? 2020, January 2020. Um, that's right. It was the beginning of the year. Um, it was a lot of fun. We had the, the preview night starting off, and um, it was a mad rush for the dealer tables for the, the preview night. It was fun, but it was it was it was all comic book fans. People were there picking up things, picking up their keys, picking up their their grails, and it was just a, a great group of people. Yeah, we uh, streamed from the short boxed booth. That was fun. Uh, first time we've done that. We might do some more of that in the near future. Hint, 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 nudge, nudge. Uh, but I was really happy with the show because uh, we're going to talk about it. I was able to upgrade several books in my collection by trading and spending very little cash. I got some big books that I've been wanting for a long time, and I just leveraged that upgrade technique that we're gonna talk about for our main topic today. But we'll get to that after our hot book of the week. Richard, what is it? Hot book this week is Weird War Tales, number 93. Oh, this is right to my heart. This is, of <laughs> course, the first appearance of the Creature Commandos how can you lose Frankenstein, Dracula, monster, uh, and they're fighting Nazis. I mean, this book was just tailor made for John, was it not? It was. <laughs> We're a couple of weeks late on this one, I know, but it's really taking off after James Gunn announced a Creature Commando series for HBO Max is in the works. It's uh, kind of confirmed. I don't know. I don't believe anything until it's announced uh the streaming date it will be live on this date and even then the Batgirl movie never happened yeah that's what i was about to say uh yeah it'll, when we're in the theaters i'll believe it right uh a cgc 9.8 of this book this blows me away uh sold on january 31st for 1095 dollars now i will say as a collector of this title and this run it is hard very hard in high grade i happen to have my little personal copy here that I bought at an LCS 
for $3, I think, about four years ago. There she is. And it's nice. It's a, it's a, it's a newsstand uh, copy, but I think it's a 9.2 max with a press and a clean. Uh, it is a hard book to find in high grade. And I've, you know, tried to find it in hard, high grade before, not really like dedicated to it. Just every time I went to a shop, I would always go through the weird war tales because I was working on a run. We're also seeing pretty consistent sales for 9.4s around $500, which just blows me away. Even raws in fine, very fine condition on eBay are fetching up to $200. The temptation to sell this book is really <laughs> strong right now. If you know what, if you're going to sell it, now is the time to do it. We've talked about uncertainty about it actually being uh, coming to fruition, the, the movie. Yeah, sell it now if you want to. This is a book I love for my PC. This is a book I would keep forever but never really get it slabbed. I am now going to send it off to get it slabbed. I think it makes sense. Uh, this comic, uh, the activity around it right now, I think is a weird, haha, pun intended, yeah. uh, combination of FOMO versus buy what you like. Because obviously I bought what I liked and now I have one and I don't have to spend a thousand dollars on it for a 9.8. But then you've got other people that just have severe FOMO for this book because of the whole TV announcement thing. And that's why I think now is the time to sell it. I can, I can almost guarantee you after the movie comes out, when it, you know, if and when it does come out, the price of the book is going to drop again. And so something, something more akin to what uh, it was before the movie. So you, know, you could sell it now and then reap the profit when you rebuy it later for a, a lower amount. It's tempting um yeah, you know? it's, yeah it's tough but it, it's again it's a pc book that i if i sell it am i going to regret it even if it drops again i don't think it's going to go back to where it is was before before it was like you know a five ten dollar book mm -hmm. in, in high grade i don't think it's ever going to be a five ten dollar book again even after the uh the fomo wears off i think it's still going to be a couple hundred dollars at least but yeah. If, I mean, if, if, if it's, if you're that reluctant to deal, to, to part with it, keep it. I mean, it's yeah. not, yeah, you, there's no urgency for, for making the decision, but I don't you need to have a book that you're not, you're not as uh, interested in. Now's a good time to, to sell. Yeah. I don't need to sell it for eggs yet. <laughs> well, the way the price of eggs are going, you may. <laughs> things aren't that dire. Uh, just a lesson. I, the only reason I have a copy is because I collect oddball stuff like this. And, and here we are now where just something that I bought that's been sitting in a long box for years is now potentially a $500 book if I get it um, slabbed. So buy what you like, folks. I know we say it all the time. Cliches are cliches for a reason. Here we go. Uh, an excellent segue into our main topic, which is upgrades, getting those upgrades, taking those books you don't care for and trading them for things you really want or taking under copies, finding a uh, higher grade copy and then selling that under copy to fund it. We have so many stories. Uh, I guess we can just start off with last weekend at California Comic Con, Richard. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't do a lot of buying, did you? What'd you get? Uh, I didn't. I got um, this book here it's on my wall. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, New Mutants number 25, from 1 in 25 variant. Uh, I got this from... Uh, the Baby Stroller Collection. Baby Stroller, yes, the Baby Stroller Collection. It, it should be a... I should get a special label for it. Um, and then I bought uh, a run of um, uh, Cerebus, early Cerebus. That's true. Okay. Uh, first of all, we need to explain the Baby Stroller Collection to people <laughs> who did not watch the live stream last week. We were at preview night the night before, which was a time for collectors, not dealers, to set up in a smaller room and trade and, and sell their, their personal collection or things that they brought to the show. Now, there was a feeding frenzy in this room. I think a lot of it were dealers coming in and buying stuff to resell the next day there's a lot of that which is fair enough fine uh but then this one guy walks in richard and i are having a conversation with someone and we see out the corner of our eyes this guy walks in carrying you know like a toddler two three year old his wife is with him and he has a baby stroller and the baby stroller not containing a baby the baby stroller is filled with slabs and comic books and he has a little handwritten sign on a 
eight and a half by 11 piece of white paper saying comics for sale. And we're kind of like looking at the corner of our eyes. We're having a conversation with someone. And all of a sudden I turn around and there is a Richard shaped puff of smoke <laughs> where, like on Looney Tunes where Richard used to be. And I see him over with the baby stroller guy. And why did you run over there so fast? Because that he, I, in the corner of my eye, I watched another person pulling up slabs out of the, the short box they were in. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, doing image recognition on each cover and he came across this one. I've been looking for this book for a, a year to find the right copy of it because Crazy. it's always expensive on eBay. Uh, and I just didn't want to deal with it. Um, I saw him pull someone, you know, that person who was going through, I saw him pull up that cover and immediately mm -hmm. I was, I was over there and, um, Struck I, was talk, I was talking to thin air at that point. I'm still, I'm still you know, with Richard. I'm like, where'd he go? Uh, yeah, it, it was, you know, I, I, I was, a, my, my fear was the guy who was leafing through yeah. it was going to buy it. So I wanted to, to secure it as quickly as possible. And, you know, baby stroller guy, uh, he, I got a, a, a good deal on it. You know, you know, one, one thing you do when you're buying from, from, um, um, a, a, a dealer or in this case a collector you know whatever price they give you is not going to be the best price you can always negotiate and i negotiate really hard because john who is who is awesome mercenary mercenary uh he he came he, he looked over my shoulder looked at the book and he said look at the spine ticks it's a nine six and there are a couple obvious spine ticks on it and I uh, I brought those to the, to the seller's attention and told them, you know, if I ever decided to resell the book, which I probably not, uh, it's going to make it difficult to to sell and justify it as a nine six, and you know, you you use those kinds of tactics. And I gave him a price, and uh, he countered, and then I gave him another price, and he accepted. And you know, I walked out the book with half of what his original asking price was. So always negotiate. Always. And just not for nothing, I got a couple of keys from the Stroller collection. I got uh, Strange Adventures 181, first appearance of Animal Man, and a showcase first appearance of Dolphin uh, combined. I think I paid 120 for both yeah. of them. Yeah, I was so jelly on that Dolphin. Not too shabby. Uh, but we bring all this up because it has nothing to do with our main topic. <laughs> <laughs> which is trading. Uh, well, it does kind of, because that night I was uh, looking at another person's table and he had a book I wanted and it was aggressively priced. I think it was overpriced, but I also brought plenty of slabs in my backpack for potential trade bait. And I thought, you know, I'm going to try to see if I can trade a couple books to this guy for the book that he has here and the slabs i traded were a silver surfer number four 8.5 uh -huh. creamed off white pages a book that is expensive two thousand dollars in that grade a book i have zero affection for i mean it's great john busema cover a classic cover of silver surfer versus thor but i don't want it in my collection i don't collect silver surfer too much whining um <laughs> oh whoa is me shalabal so i traded him a that silver surfer in number four 8.5 and 500 dollars cash which is always king for this little baby yes that is a captain america comics number 10 from the golden age um if you did not watch the live sale you missed my glee of showing this or not live sale the live stream last week it is a 1.5 it's um slightly it's amazing 1.5 you guys tell me why is this a 1.5 uh full back cover full front cover read the notes attached at both staples still there are major spine splits on it uh i know eric our friend from ohio uh jumped in and said they really hammer brittle pages and spine split combos which i get uh, because I think if I ever uh, took this out of the case, it just might separate immediately. So it's never leaving the case. But I've never owned a Captain America under issue 40 from the Golden Age in my life. Mm -hmm. And here, please take this Silver Surfer that I don't care about. <laughs> and this is a great example of upgrading your collection. If you've got things that you that are expensive and you don't care for them, 
trade. He's going to sell that Silver Surfer number four slab pretty quickly. Yeah. You know? I think faster than he would have sold the cap. It's debatable. I think the brittle pages probably scare a lot of people away. I So you're probably right. He probably would flip that faster, but caps are in early timelies are always in demand, uh, which is great. Um, the other book that I traded for, and this one I'm particularly proud of because not because I think I got one over on anybody, but just because I traded a GI Joe 21, the famous silent snake eyes issue, a 9.6 direct edition for men's adventures, number 28 in a 3.0. Okay. Again, he's going to sell that GI Joe 9.6 in a split second versus sitting on this to wait for someone like me to come along. Mm -hmm. Um, it is a book that I did not have from that 50s Atlas Heroes run. You know, it's off white pages. It's got some crayon on the logo, but it's a 3.0 and it's a tough black cover and I don't have it. And I was able to trade a friggin' G.I. Joe for it. I don't care about G.I. Joe. Yeah, that's awesome. Get get the books that you want. And, and, and you know, that, that goes to my feelings about a, a attachment to my collection. There are some books I have great attachment to, but other books, you know, if, you know, if there's an opportunity to uh, improve my collection in, in the way, way that I find more interesting, I'm more than happy to trade them or sell them to make that happen. Tell everybody how you traded your way up to a Marvel superheroes number 20 and 9.6. Yeah, I've been collecting Marvel superheroes number 20. That's the, the famous Dr. Doom cover. You see by that came over my shoulder. Um, it is one of my favorite books. I started buying them back when they were 50 bucks a piece and uh, slowly but surely collected. At one point, I had 14 copies of it. But the highest grade that out of that set was an 8.0. Um, and I was uh, I had sold the 8.0 and I was coveting uh, a higher grade. And as, as is how half of my collection exists, John contacted me and said that there was an auction there was a, 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 a an auction going on i can't remember who it was was it uh was I it think, heritage i think it was, comic? I th was it an auction or was it just thrown up for a buy oh it that's now? it yeah it was a buy yeah. it now um so i got i got my nine six um which is awesome white this pages. is a white pages it's i'm gonna get horrible glare there but uh it is an absolutely beautiful book um insane I paid, I paid an arm and a leg for it, but there are only, oh, what is it? 13 nine, nine sixes on the, on the census is a very small number of nine sixes out there. There's only three nine eights. And, um, uh, I am thrilled to have it. This is, this is a permanent part of my collection. And, um, I could not, I would not pay what people are asking for this book now. <laughs> uh, so it was a perfect time to get it. You, you financed it by selling almost 14 under copies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which is crazy. I mean, it's an extreme example, but it's an example. <laughs> well, I did. I actually still have some of the under copies left, uh, okay. but I didn't sell a majority of them. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the way, again, it's a book, getting something that you want by selling things that have less value to you. And uh, yeah, that's, it's a great book. Uh, I have a, a similar story, Yellow Claw number one. You guys know about my uh, never-ending quest for that book of a couple of years ago, uh, and it was weird. It was a big dry spell, and then some somewhere just out of the blue, several low-grade copies showed up, and I snatched those up, and I was able to sit on them for a little bit while the prices went up. I slabbed them. I flipped them, and then I took the cash from, I think – slabbing and selling three copies of yellow claw number one to afford my current high copy which is a is it a 6.0 or a 7.0 i can't remember off the top of my head uh, it's funny you, you went looking for one had a hard time finding one you bought one and then all of a sudden two more showed up it was crazy <laughs> you know why i'm gonna i'm gonna grab these because three become one uh three lower grade copies and making my money back and a little extra gets me to that 6.0. Um, you have the same kind of story with your X-Men 94. Yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of X-Men 94. I'm a big X-Men fan in general. This is, this is a stock copy signed by Mr. Chris Claremont, 
It's a 6.5. Uh, I got my first copy of this book. Well, I've had several copies of it. The first copy I got was in the garbage bag collection. Right. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> so it was new Remind the new viewers what the garbage bag collection is. By the way, we have our own pedigrees. <laughs> yes, we do. I bought a collection. I found somebody on um, on Craigslist who was selling a comic book collection, and we met in a McDonald's as a nice public area. And he walks in with two big garbage bags full of comics, and in it he had a run of X Men from '94 through about 150, and um, <laughs> so. The hefty collection. Yeah, yeah. so I, I I bought it just to, if for no other reason, to rescue them. Right. Yeah, brought them home and, and got them all uh, bagged and boarded because they weren't even bagged and boarded. They were literally just in the garbage bag. Um, but so, yeah, I started off with a, with a pretty rough copy there. Um, this is a valuable book. And I also went to our, one of my local comic book stores, and he had one on the wall for 100 bucks. I bought it immediately. Um, so I, I, you know, I had collected at one point I had four of them. I sold two of them, um, and used the profits to, um, no, actually, no, not, I, I ref, I'm going to rephrase this one. This book came when I traded with one of the friends of the show, Yakuza doc. Uh -huh. Um, he, he wanted my, uh, ASM 300 it was a nine, eight and it was just a direct copy and he uh he had a, a copy of this and he had a um another fantastic four book and some cash and we traded and uh so that's how this particular book came into the collection but yeah i have i have sold the other ones i have one more left to sell but yeah this was this was this is one of my trades um it was uh he was happy i was happy and it was a good good situation i think you're bringing up another point which is you can always sell some books that you don't have a lot of attachment for and fund the hobby uh it's obvious but um it's something that i think needs to be reminded and you can do this at shows uh i had another book i had a saga of the swamp thing number 21 9.0 slab second alan moore issue but it was a marks jewelers variant and it was the only Mark Jewelers variant on the census. So I had no idea how to price it. So I approached a dealer and originally for a trade, he didn't want to trade for it, but he offered me cash for it. And I thought, okay, I'll take that offer. We went back and forth a couple of times and settled on an amount, but I walked right from that table with the cash, walked right over to another dealer and bought Margie mm -hmm. number 36. Who, who wants Margie 36? I do. Um, because it is the issue where Stan Lee is featured as a character, um, where he takes, you know, the 17 year old Margie out to a nightclub, <clears throat> but that's a whole other story of inappropriateness that we won't get into, but this is a book that sells for a premium. Uh, the people that know, know, so it's tough to find. It's the first time I've ever seen a copy was at that show last week. And I thought. I'm going to go sell this swamp thing that I don't really have a huge attachment to and fund that Margie. Would I have spent the money for the Margie if I just had to buy it flat out? Probably not. I don't know. You were, you went back and forth on that book for a while. You, you looked at it, you walked away, you came back and looked at it again. So I don't know. I think you well, still looked at, looked at it and walked away before I made the sale. Yeah, you did. You did. I didn't want to pay for the book, but you know, outright, I wanted to get some money somewhere else because I could, I, you know, it was priced, I think at 450, 475, and I didn't want to pay 475 for it, even though it is, it's really nice. I would say it's probably a, oh, a 5.0, a six after I clean it, it just needs a good cleaning. Um, but you know, I wasn't going to pay 475 for it, but I sold that saga of swamp thing. And I, I more than halved the price with that cash that I got from that. So uh, very happy with that. Awesome. Uh, one more, you want to talk about it because you're gonna go on a fishing expedition, I think. You want to- Oh, to oh yeah, I have one more one more book that I do have. Um, it's Fantastic Four, oh. um, number, annual number two. Holy uh, moly, that's like super high grade for that book. It's an 8.5. It's an 8.5, yeah. It is It is really, really high. I have, I have only seen one other 8.5 out there for sale 
I had a 7.5. I bought a 7.5 from uh, another YouTuber, uh, Bryce Comics. He, it was uh, an example of a book. It was an A5 originally. He thought he could get it to a 9.0, so he cracked and pressed it. And it came back 7.5 instead. Oh, ouch. Uh, yeah. So he was, he was heartbroken about it. So he just wanted to get rid of it because, it, you know, it's sitting there in your collection and you know how much money you lost on it. And it's like, ah. Oh. So I got a good price on that. Um, but then this A5 came up and I bought it and then sold by 7.5, you know, and, and it was a little bit of money as a difference. Um, I got I got the A5. So, yeah, I, I am super stoked about like this, because like I said, this is this is a tough book to get in high grade. Um, it's a square bound book. It's all that white cover. And uh, it tends to get really heavy cover cover wear. So especially on the back, the back covers of that one are always dirty that and annual number three with dr doom so let's all just take a lesson from this here that i think the things to walk away from here learning is don't be afraid to ask if you're at a show uh for trades or to sell bring some trade bait put it in your backpack if you if you don't get any bites the first hour go out to your car and throw them in the trunk and then, so you're not walking around with them the whole time but i think people get this thing in their head where they're like, Oh, I don't, these guys don't want my books. They're not, they're not interested in trading. They're here to make money. Yeah. But sometimes you have something that is going to make them money quicker than what you really want. That Margie 36 <laughs> that's on the wall, you know, a GI Joe 21 is going to sell a lot faster than that. So, but be careful. I mean, pick, pick your books, you know, because yeah. not every book is going to be uh, universally interesting to other people. You know, Hulk 181, you're always, you're almost always going to find someone who's interested in it. A Hulk 184, and yeah, you maybe have a more difficult time. So um, be be realistic in what you're what you're looking for. Also, I think of something to take away from this: negotiate. Never be afraid to walk away from a deal because yeah. if, when you're not afraid to walk away, you have less pressure to accept the offer that the the seller is. And especially on the late, late the last day of the show, Sunday, Sunday afternoon, when the dealer is looking at the clock and there's still books there that have to be packed up and, and taken home, they're definitely much more flexible in those at those times. And if you're bringing trade uh, bait, know what they're worth. Do mm -hmm. some research. Go on GPA. Find out uh, you're gonna you're gonna be able to trade a slab much easier they're going to be able to trade something raw so maybe invest in getting it slapped first so just be informed be knowledgeable know what you've got and stick to it and remember a little a little cash on top of that trade might get you right over the line a little lubricant yeah definitely you know because everybody loves that green especially middle-aged folks you know where i'm going it's time for the old fart rule <laughs> All right, old fart rule. We go back 40 years to 1983 for the comics that shaped us. How's that? That's like awesome. That? I love that. That's great. There you go. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Crazy Magazine number 94. This is the final issue of this long running satire and parody magazine, Marvel's answer to Mad Magazine and Cracked, always number three. <laughs> when you talk about the great satire magazines, it's always mad, cracked, maybe sick, if people remember Sick Magazine, mm -hmm. and Crazy Magazine. Uh, as a kid, I really only bought this if I was super desperate for something to read, if there was, or if there was some sort of superhero parody inside, because near the end of the run, they started leaning into the superhero parodies. Like later issues featured Teen Hulk. He was Hulk as a teen, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John Byrne did some X-Men parodies in here, Richard? I never read it. I read Mad. I remember folding the back cover of Mad Magazine to, to probably the horror of collectors today. Al Jaffe's fold-ins. Yeah. Great. God, what a way to ruin X. Uh, well, speaking of ruining something great, uh, later versions of Crazy Magazine featured Howard the Duck in a really horrible strip that had nothing to do with the great character that Steve Gerber uh, crafted. Um, this issue, the last issue of Crazy Magazine, I, I feature because it features a reprint of perhaps Crazy's most notorious strip ever, Casper the Dead Baby. 
a vicious, vicious parody of Casper the Friendly Ghost written by Marv Wolfman. How did this ever get past comic code? It wasn't. It was a magazine. Oh, so right. no, no comics code needed. Have you ever read Casper the Dead Baby, Richard? I, yes, you provided me a link to read it, and it was horrifying. It was absolutely – every time I thought it couldn't get worse, it got worse. <laughs> if you ever wondered how Casper got to be a ghost, here is the story that explains it. It is dark. It is vicious. It is awful. It is hilarious. It could never be published today. Absolutely not. Oh, boy. Not at all. Not I'm at all. going to leave a link in the description where you guys can read the full story of Casper the Dead Baby which sounds just as awful as it sounds when I say it. Please, caveat, do not open it at work. <laughs> trigger, trigger warning for everyone. Uh, for Crazy Magazine number 94, the last issue, not a lot of sales here. Uh, we saw an eBay listing for a copy in fine condition that sold for a best offer. They were asking 50 bucks for it. Who knows? I didn't see what it actually sold for, but I do know it's low circulation, uh, wasn't selling really well. The original art, by the way, for Casper the Dead Baby, Richard, the original art by Marie Severin, mm -hmm. sold on Heritage back in 2011 for just $896.25 for the whole story. Oh, that I is a friggin' that. bargain. I would buy that in a minute. Yeah. And have That's it on display like a John Waters art festival. It's classic. I, 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 yeah. Um, Read it. <laughs> That's all I could say. <laughs> I wish I had thought about Casper the Dead Baby before last weekend when we saw Marv Wolfman. At oh, the yeah. Because I would love to crack open that head and say, uh, what was going on in there when you uh, you came up with that Casper the Dead Baby story? It's funny. Is it? Can you have that kind of humor in 2023? No. We, is, know, we yeah. know too much, right? Huh? We know too much about life now, we right? We do. We do. We do. Uh, it is, mm -hmm. as you say, it's very dark and um, it, it covers topics that are definitely not something that you would cover in a magazine today. I will say it does have a feel-good ending. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if you if you want to take revenge on your father for killing you. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Yes. Uh, only check out that link in the description if you are uh, brave of heart and uh, your stomach is ready for something that may upset it. Oh, let's move on to our <laughs> underrated <laughs> of the week while we're ahead of ourselves. Richard, what you got here? Uh, my underrated book this week is X-Men number 10, the original X-Men number 10 from 1964, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, this I'm I'm you know I, I was looking at this book. It's first appearance of Kazar, who is a incredibly popular character. He has he's had titles and series throughout the years. We were talking about Kazar when I was out there about how how frequently we came across him. What if I told you this wasn't the first appearance of Kazar? It's not. The first appearance of Kazar is in Marvel Comics number one in the uh, Golden Age. Ah. Uh, Sure. Silver Age appearance of Kazar. Hate to You're sound right. like a know it all. Sorry, everybody. No, no, perfect. That way we don't have to hear it in the comments. You're right. This is the first Silver Age appearance of Kazar. It's the first appearance of the Savage Land, which Indeed. uh we saw a glimpse of what appeared to be the Savage Lands in uh in uh Doctor Strange's uh second movie. So who knows? You know, we may see Savage Land in the future of the MCU, and if so. You're going to see Kazar. And, uh, you know, this book is going to go go crazy. An 8.0, the last sale, was only $1,051, which I think is amazing for a book of this this significance. You know, it's the yeah. number first 10 X-Men. Uh, a 5.0 is only $300. There's a sale in December. And it's it's amazing. As I said, you know, Kazar is a popular character. Um I'm just surprised that this book is still as affordable as it is, given its, you know, its importance. Hey, let's not forget, Kazar fought and beat Thanos in 1997 in his title. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, take that, Squirrel Girl. I don't think she's beaten Thanos yet. He hasn't beaten Thanos, no. 
Uh, yeah, it's, 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 I know it's funny to say one of the first 10 issues of the X-Men is an underrated book, but I do agree with you. I mean, look at that Kirby cover. It's just so awesome. Uh, it's just great. I love that issue. I wish I had it. I do not. So, uh, great pick. My pick this week, talking about the creature commandos, weird war tales, number 124. This is the last issue of this long running war slash horror anthology series. It also includes a one page wrap up of the creature commando series and the GI robot series written by Robert Kaniger in this one page. Keep in mind, this all happens in one page of this comic book. General Paul Levitz of the army. You okay. recognize that name? Yes, I do. <laughs> he sentences the GI robot and the creature commandos to death. But the sentence is commuted and they're sent into a mission in space. However, the rockets malfunction and they head towards a destination unknown. Bye bye, GI robot and creature commandos. Uh, kind of a funny fourth wall, uh, you know, Paul Levitt's canceling this title and Robert Kaniger saying, fine, let's just go send them into space and get rid of them. Uh, what I found interesting and always take a big caveat with these circulation statements. According to the yearly circulation statement that the publishers used to have to publish once a year in these books, a couple issues before issue 124 we're talking about here, they published the circulation statement for this book. This book was selling 220,000 copies wow. and got canceled. Wow. I, I, yeah, you know, now that you say that, I remember the circulation numbers that they used to print in the books. That's great. Now, the reason why I say caveat is because some of these were accurate. Some of them were just made up. They just threw any number in there to fill it out and get it done. So I somehow doubt Weird War Tales was still still selling 220,000 copies in 1983. I find that really hard to believe. I'm sure it sold much more strongly on the newsstand than it did in the direct market, but still, come on. Uh Back to this book in particular, this issue sold in a 9.6 on February 1st this year for $119, not too shabby. Mm -hmm. Raw sell for about seven or $15, depending on the condition. I have a feeling this might change as people scramble for Creature Commandos keys. This is one of them. This wrapped it up. It was one page, but they're there and they get sent off into space never to return. Or do they? Or do they? <laughs> All right, Richard, here's your second chance. If second. they want more content during the week, where should they go? If they're on Instagram or Facebook, they can go to Bronze and Modern Gods. If they're more web inclined, they can go to the website, bronzingmoderngods.com. If you like this video, do us a favor, help support the channel by giving us a thumbs up, subscribing if you haven't so far. If you look, you can thank us with a uh, a monetary donation, a much as much as a cup of Starbucks coffee, as they say, will be truly appreciated to help us buy some new equipment. You've seen that we've improved with a little bit of 4K, a little 1080p action. That's because you guys are watching and the revenue is coming in and we're able to put it right back into the show. So if you want to thank us, just hit that thanks button as you see on YouTube right here. And I also want to thank of the people who came up to us at California Comic Con, yes. and they're just so gracious and 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 talking to us to, about how how they appreciate the show. We really love that. John was eating it up; <laughs> his head was twice as big. With that, I know, and that's that's <laughs> big. So, but it really, it really is appreciated. And um, um, if you see us at a show, come up and say hi. Uh, we really, really like that kind of stuff. Do not hesitate. And uh, and we will see you before we see you at our next show. We'll see you next time here. Absolutely. Everybody, stay safe.